Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and in this video I like to cover some of the statistical points of interest in the by-election results this week. Uh, put simply, very bad news for the Conservatives, despite their Uxbridge copian. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So, first thing to note is that when comparing the results in these by-elections with previous elections, including in 1997 when Labour last took power, some boundaries have changed. However, in each case, the three constituencies contested yesterday have either become more conservative since 1997 or stayed the same. It's also been noted that regarding Uxbridge, it's a university town and students are on home, they're back at home, summer holidays. So with, un unless they had postal votes, they're unlikely to have voted there yesterday. But if Sunak does want his general election in term time, like for example, November 2024, then he'll have to factor in a load of annoyed students voting while he's at it. Now, in terms of comparisons, even in 1997, when Labour were turning over Tory seats after safe Tory seat, they still didn't win in Oxbridge. It's a proper conservative area. The fact that Labour were even expected to win and are still expected to win in the general election when votes will be about the national government, not on unrelated local policies so much, that shows just what a strong position Labour have moved themselves into. And I cannot emphasise this enough. This is not a bellwether seat. This is not one where you go, you, you sagely nod and go, yes, this, this flipped Conservative in 90, it flips Labour in 1997. It tends to flip with the national mood. It does not. Beyond Top Line, who's well worth a follow on Twitter, uh, said there was even a by-election in Uxbridge. So I checked it out myself. This was in 1997. So Tony Blair had only just formed power. A little late later, there was a, a by-election in Uxbridge. Back then, it was just Uxbridge as well. Not Uxbridge and, and, and um, South Ryslip, just Uxbridge. And at the time, Blair's government were 35 points up in the polls. They were stunningly popular. And the Tories still comfortably, comfortably held this seat. And the seat is now more Tory. So now that it's become Uxbridge and South Ryslip, that's made it much more Tory. The boundaries have changed in 2010. It's more conservative now. So when you're looking at this Uxbridge result, as with all the by-elections, it's calibrated against expectations. I talked this morning about how disappointing it was. And that was because Labour were expected to win it. So in my mind, Labour had won it and then they lost it. So of course it's a bad result because Labour should have won it. But... If a statistician came out of, say, a three-year-long coma, didn't know what was going on with Labour, and they looked at the Wikipedia pages of Uxbridge and South Ryslip and previously Uxbridge election results, they would be amazed at what Labour have done here. Even losing, it's like, well, you've only just lost. You shouldn't be winning this seat. It is the first time since the boundary changes that the Conservative candidate has been pegged back so far. And as I say, Labour did not even take it in 1997. When, you know, and come the general election, ULEZ is a fringe issue. I'm not saying it won't feature at all. Of course it will. But it will be a fringe issue as opposed to the defining wedge issue that it was uh, yesterday. And it's still, Labour is still likely to take it. And this isn't even the sort of seat Labour needs to particularly target. It will target it because it's winnable. But it, it's not the sort of seat they need to target. The fact that the Conservative top brass were out in Oxbridge today celebrating, it's understandable, of course but deluded. There is nothing for them to cheer about this result other than it cushions Rishi Sunak a little. It's the perception that is good for them, not the result, or as in the, the stats in the results. But the other results hold far more terrors because not only did they lose them, but let's take a look, shall we? Somerton and Frome. Now, this one has remained the same back to 1997. The Liberal Democrats have held this seat before. They took it in 1997 when the Tories were on their, the, when they were last on their way out. And they held it all the way up until 2015, when, of course, their support for Tory austerity ironically obliterated them at the ballot box and allowed a majority Tory government. But when they first took the seat, it was won with a majority of just over 100 votes. Really very tight. This week, they've taken the seat back with a majority of 11,000. Their previous best was in 2010, when they won with a majority of just under 2,000. 11,000 this week. Insane. And when you consider that the turnout was about 44%, as opposed to the usual 74% in a general election, can you imagine? Not that I'm suggesting the Lib Dems will necessarily hold this seat. It is, of course, possible. They took it in 1997. They could easily hold it. 
but it, it won't necessarily be one of their top target seats because there are far easier seats to win for them. But it highlights that even a 20,000 majority is not safe for the Tories. In fact, it is a statement that if you are a Tory MP and the Lib Dems decide to target your seat, they stand a very good chance of taking it from you. Oh, and just for a laugh, when the Lib Dems did get that previous best majority of just under 2,000 in 2010, it was against Jacob Rees-Mogg's sister. Her brother is likely to need the gracious loser speech next time. I actually don't know if her loser speech was gracious, but let's assume. Then on to Selby and Aintsy. Now, this seat was only created in 2010, but was uh, a very strong Tory seat throughout. That Labour have now taken a rural seat from the Conservatives is immense. And the currently youngest MP in Parliament has a decent chance of extending his stay. Because ordinarily you would say, well, this is probably going to flip back to the Tories in the general election, isn't it? A seat like this is not going to attract the sort of resources that Labour can afford to throw at it for a by-election. General election, don't be ridiculous. There's like 200 seats you target before this one. However, the boundaries are changing again. In the old days, Selby was a bellwether constituency, which tended to flip between Labour and the Conservatives, according to the national mood. Um, then it changed to Selby and Aintsy and became much more conservative, a bit like when Uxbridge went to Uxbridge and South Ryslip. Um, but it's going back to Selby, so it'll be very similar again for the next election. So Keir Mather has a decent chance to not only hold it in the general election, but for as long as Labour remain popular nationally. Essentially, as far as the raw results of these by-elections go, they tell the story of three constituencies which have seen swings against them, against the Conservatives, the like of which you cannot find in any previous election in these places. For Labour, it speaks of swings uh, towards them, which far exceed that which Labour achieved in 1997, and of course the same for the Lib Dems in Somerton and Frome. Um, but for Labour, it is just as well. They're achieving much larger swings than they have in the past because they need them. Nine, 2019 was a way worse year for Labour than 1992. I also talked in my first video about tactical voting. Now, in all three by-elections, we saw tactical voting along Labour Lib Dem lines. In both Uxbridge and Selby, the Lib Dem vote crashed into next to nothing. In Somerton, the same happened to the Labour vote. Now, there wasn't that pattern for the Green Party votes, but that makes sense. See, come the general election, both the Liberal Democrats and Labour will gain seats if there's a significant level of tactical voting amongst their supporter. And the same is true of collections of by-elections like this as well. The Lib Dems and Labour have both gained by-elections as a result of tactical voting. Right? Neither party can explicitly approve of this. In fact, they get really upset about it when asked. But they both gain and they both know they gain. And I know some want all of the anti-Tories to vote tactically, but you've got to understand the situation for the Green Party, say, uh, I mean, we can appeal to them in the interest of getting rid of the climate-destroying Tories, but that only works for a general election. It doesn't work for a by-election where there is no quid pro quo. The Green Party, even in the by-election, actually do not stand to gain much, if anything, from tactical voting. They could actually potentially end up with no seats at all after the next election. If Labour wants tactical green votes, uh, reliably, they're probably gonna have to wait until they promise PR in their manifesto, I think. But, you know, that being said, I think there will be some green tactical voting in the general election. See, there's absolutely no reason uh, for green supporters to do it for a by-election, because there's nowhere for Lib Dem or Labour supporters to return the favor, and, and like, what does it do for them? Not really anything. But in the general election, it determines policy. It, what is the, particularly the environmental policy? Is it Labour's green policies? Which may or might, may not be everything they'd like to see, or indeed what people in Labour would like to see, but it's in stark contrast to the Tories' sludge policies. Something that we can see be made even worse, because what have we seen today? Every Tory anti-net zero attack dog has leapt on the Uxbridge result as if it's got anything to do with environmental policies. It sounds like it, but it's not. It's, to, it's public health. It's nothing to do with carbon emissions. It's to do with particulate emissions. You clean up the air. But anyway, even amongst tact even the tactical voting amongst obvious beneficiaries of Labour and the Lib Dem supporters, on this scale in the general election, will absolutely gain both parties more seats from the Tories. Absolutely certain to. It's a shame that we have a first-past-the-post system which necessitates it, but that is the reality, and tactical voting works. And it works to the advantage of your own party when there's a sort of a, a national understanding. 
Over the next few days, no doubt statisticians will look at the final details of ward by ward breakdowns of the results, and we may find that they spot more interesting patterns. I'm going to guess that those will be more bad news for the Conservatives as well. Right now, the take home from these by-elections is that the public have lost faith in the Conservatives. They, they lost vote share everywhere. The anti-Tory voters are willing to get behind the strongest anti-Tory candidate. We saw strong tactical voting. And Rishi Sunak did not stem the tide. He may have held Uxbridge and South Ryslip, but it was the worst result seen for, this, for his party since the seat formed in 2010. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.